was an amazing run. Yes. Oh my brain! Goodness me. Oh, are you serious? Hey guys, I'm Kyle Baldock, I'm 25 years old, I'm from the Gold Coast, Australia. I'm a BMX professional and I'm a five-time X Games gold medalist. Everyone has their own story of where they're from and this is mine. I'm from Southport, so kind of most of Southport is a housing commission, like a, kind of like a bogan bit of like the city, you know what I mean, like a rundown bit. Looking around now, we really didn't have that much. Like my mum may do whatever she had, you know, money that she had coming in from wherever. Plus three, little, uh, three boys, you know what I mean? We wanted everything and uh, she would go without sometimes just to make sure that we have whatever we need. Mum would let us go down to this local park down the road. It was probably about 50 metres from our house and uh, there was a bunch of kids that used to go to this park too. We would have no t-shirts on, no shoes. Um, some of them would just be in their undies, you know what I mean? Like, but would make as much fun as we could and that fun back then was throwing rocks at cars, getting in trouble by the police. We'd run from one side to the other side of the oval, you know what I mean? If they're on this side, we'd run to that side, so. But back then I never really knew that that was bad. I, I just, it was adrenaline rush, you know, attention seeking. Uh, I decided to move to Coomera because of the drugs and the street and the trouble. I didn't want my boys growing up in that kind of neighborhood. I wanted the best for the boys. So I thought the best thing was to get away from them that area and moved to Coomera. The house in Coomera we got was like a mansion. It was, it was massive. Our house in Southport was this three bedroom house that looked like a shoe almost, you know what I mean? And we, we rock up in Coomera for the first time and we get to see a house that five bedroom, like three bathrooms. Like I thought I was living like this dream. So I'd ride to school and then for the first year, Rode every single day, loved it, and then at the end of the year, my bike got stolen. And uh, it's pretty funny because the school ended up buying me a new bike because it got stolen from school grounds, but they always told me that BMX would never lead me to anything or it would never get me anywhere in life. What actually sparked it for me was I was, always played Dave Mira as well. So I've seen the tricks being done, you know, I could do double backflips on a game and all this stuff, but I used to go to an actual BMX track and I met two dudes there that were older than me, Crazy Colin and McFly these two like local pros from Asheville BMX track. Well, when we first met Kyle, he had his bleach blonde hair, looked like a little M&M. I guess he idolized us and all the boys. He slowly started changing to where he'd wear the ripped denim shorts, start wearing singlets or no shirt at all like Colin. They did tricks that weren't like the tricks that I was doing on the game, but they were doing like, you know, X ups or, or turn downs and stuff. And at that point in my life, I never seen anything like that. It blew me away, like all I wanted to do, all I talked about, all I uh, dreamt about was being these two dudes. I was always keen to hang out with them whenever they could and we never texted each other, we, I didn't have a phone or anything like that, so what I had to do every day is I finished school at 3, get home at 3.30 and I would ride from my house in Southport all the way to Ashmore BMX track and I would stay there. I would go on skate parks all the time but would have to detour to his mum's house to ask her if we could take him out with us, which was always okay so long as we got him back before dark. 15 years old, I left the track, like moved house and whatnot. I left like Colin McFly and all the other dudes at the track. They used to, they just lived near there, so they'd always go there. Um, but I was like traveling and I moved to Coomera and I was away from like the track itself. So I didn't even know if anyone was still riding and whatnot. So when I moved back to Southport after I was in Coomera, I went to the track and I thought that I was gonna see Colin and everyone there. And I just remember feeling weird because he was always there. He was always at he was always uh, he was always at the track. Like he was always a loud dude that was obnoxious. You know what I mean? Like you could just know that he was there before you even get out of your car. Like before you even get to the skate park, you could just hear him. And like it was weird because there was a bunch of people standing around, and I just went over there and I was just like asking them how they're going. They knew who I was. I asked them like, have they seen Colin in a while? And they actually said to me that he uh, passed away. And I was like, what? Ended up ringing my friend McFly, and uh, he literally told me that he committed suicide. To this very day, like if I could do any, like say one thing, I just wanted to go back and ride with him 
before it all happened, you know what I mean? Like before I was a pro, I wish I just got to ride for him again and, you know, just to say thank you for what he taught me. And I mean, like, that's just life to life skills, but he taught me to love what you do. You love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I never work a day in my life. <laughs> that's it. All through school, I was getting kind of in trouble in the background. Kind of no one knew, except for like the few friends that I was hanging out with. But when I turned 17, it was actually a day before I turned 17, it was like nine o'clock in the morning, I went to court and she said to me like, what, you're back again? Shrugged it off, kind of like a joke. Then she said to me, if I ever catch you in here again, I'll put as many years as I can on you and you'll go away forever. And like to my mum and myself, being 16 years old, we were just, we were gobsmacked that she could even say that. And I looked at my mum and I asked her after, I was like, can she say that to us? And uh, she could do whatever she wanted really at the end of the day, because I've been there three times. She's given me three warnings. As soon as she said that to me, that was a BMX thing. I stopped hanging out with my friends. I started watching BMX, started like, you know, making my whole world revolve around BMX. And my friends then became BMX riders. And that means I was having friends that were doing the same thing I wanted to do. You know, that's how I felt like I got out of the circle. It, it was kind of like BMX saved me. And like, I know people say that all the time, like things save them, but I really think that if I didn't ride bikes, I would be in a way worse place because I like, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I didn't finish school. I, I went to year 11. In year 11, I had a meeting with the principal and the deputy principal with my mum. They literally told my mum, Cole doesn't need to be in school. He's like, uh, he's gonna do nothing. He's gonna be nothing. He, he doesn't listen. He's like, uh, I'm rude, I was rude. Um, I just couldn't deal with what was, like how they were trying to teach us. They were always talking down at me and stuff and I always thought that they were trying to pick on me. My mum had the conversation with me before I turned 18. She said to me, I'll pay for everything for one year. You wanna be a professional athlete? This BMX pro, she used to always say BMX pro. Then go do it. Like show me obviously that you can go do this. It like hit me where I wanted to be a pro but I didn't know, even understand what that took to be a professional athlete. I think it was like three months in I had to go get a job because like I had nothing. I was lifting railway sleepers every day for, for two weeks I'm pretty sure and at the last day of the two weeks a dude said I had to come back and that's what I'm going to be doing again for the next two weeks because I was like an apprentice or whatever. I took my money and I ran. Bought a brand new bike, never looked back. I bought the bike with every cent I have and I looked after it like it was like a baby. No scratches, no nothing, and I kind of just like grew into the love of every day learning something new. All he did, he rode his bike day, night. He was, that's his love. Like his bike would be in his bedroom. It wasn't allowed in the garage, it wasn't allowed anywhere. Had to be in his bedroom. Got me to the level where mum now believes that I could be a professional athlete. So in 2010, after riding for about, you know, four or five years, that hard, like, going to the skate park every day, riding my bike to school and whatnot, I was always at Coomera Skate Park and this one time, a dude just drove past and he was in a big uh, yellow Jeep. Like, that's what I remember the most of. And he did a U-turn at the front of Coomera and he stopped. Oh, I think I was learning how to do front flip, like a front flip fly out of this bowl. And he just walked over. You can ride pretty good. I was like, thanks, man. Like, didn't didn't know what it, like who he was or whatever. And he's like, hey, I have this company. I'd love it if you came and rode for me. At that time, I thought he was talking like absolute garbage to me. But he gave me a card. The next day, I rang him. That's kind of how like my whole BMX sponsorship started. It wasn't because I went out and tried to get people to sponsor me. I just rode every day, and somehow, some way, he just went past the skate park and he seen me. And I asked if I could go to America. And I wanted to go to Greenville, North Carolina. Really, that's where I wanted to go. That's where Ryan Nyquist lived, and that's where Dave Mirror lived. It's hard to go, all right, you can go do this, but you have to go overseas for it and all this stuff, because we don't have anything here. There's no big comps here for him. So I did, I went straight over to America. When I landed there, the first person that I met was Dave Mirror, and it was kind of like a video game slash not real, like, Thing inside my own head like I couldn't speak to him at the start I didn't know if he was even real or like 
pinch myself and be like, hey, is this actually him? You watch all the famous artists that you wanna, you know, you wanna go and meet, but you don't know if they're gonna be like that in real, in real life. And he was so genuine, he wasn't there to play. He was there to get the job done and then leave. To me, being so young, being the very first time ever to America either, seeing that was just like, that's what I want to be. You know what I mean? Because like, the same, when I looked at people, I was like, I want to be Dave Mira, I want to be Ryan Gugler, I want to be Daniel Durs or stuff like that. But at the end of the day, my goal was to beat them, always. When I was there, I got an open invitation to go to Jutor. As I rocked up to the park, everyone was there. There was all the pros. The pros to me back then were the dudes that you looked at and you were like, I can't talk to them. I can't like look at them for too long because if they look at me, it's going to be all over for me and they're not going to like me or something. But I went to do a 360 double tail whip and ended up doing a front flip bar spin. And uh, what happened was the bars hit my leg and pretty much stopped me upside down. I landed flat on my back. When I got up, I was full of adrenaline, so I was like, Let's go. Stood up on my bike, pedaled, and as soon as I went to pedal, I just collapsed. Like, Mira came over, and he said, you're crazy. I don't know why you tried to do that. You could have won without it and stuff, and I was like, no way. But I didn't believe in myself the way that I, I feel like other people seen me. The month after, I went back to Greenville, North Carolina. I rode all the time, constantly. That's how I feel like I got over the stages of like giving up, you know what I mean? Because it, it can be very easy to give up if you're in front of 25,000 people, 50,000 people, and you crash. Come to the last month I was in America, and there was a contest called the Trans Am Comp. If you won, you won a car. That contest ended up being the first contest I ever won, ever in my life, and I won a car. I called my mum from the middle console. Like, I have a photo of it. So all I did for the next month when I was in America, ride every day, easy 10 hours a day, every day. Come home, non-stop riding for six months, and then I went back over again. My brother ended up passing away a week before my actual ticket was meant to be, like before I was meant to go and get my ticket. It was March 4th, 2011, and um, my brother was in Ashmore on a motorbike with a friend. Now, as I come over a Crescent, a car was in the middle island turning right, and what happened was he accidentally clipped my brother's bike. Like the person driving the motorbike died instantly. Blake's friend, um, and Blake catapulted about 20 meters onto a footpath and then onto the grass, they said. After losing a family member, it's super hard just to do anything. I don't like people just don't move sometimes or whatnot. Child was iffing about going and I said that he had to go for the sake that he told his brother that he was going to become a famous BMX rider and Blake would have liked that. I told Kyle he had to go. Um, it was hard because he was going to be away for a long time, especially after just losing Blake. Um, I was more protective of the boys. Um, but look what happened. He kicked us. The day that I got to actual due to the first day, I, that was the day that I found out that there was four days of riding. Open qualifier, qualifying, semi-finals, finals. And the first day was 180 people. And I set out just to make the next day. Every day, that's what I set out to do. So on and so forth, to finals. So the first day went really well. I ended up coming first and open qualifier. So I made it in. The next day, this was a Friday, I rocked up and uh, it started getting a little bit more serious. A lot more people were starting to do bigger tricks. And then it came to the third day. Third day was the hard day. It was the first day that I ever did double backflip over a box jump. Ended up winning that day. I ended up winning the first three days in a row. And then I had Ryan Gutler come up to me and he said to me, what happens if you win tomorrow? And I said to him, I have no idea. I, I hope I win though, like what happens if I do? Like, should, I kept asking questions, should I do this trick? Should I do that trick? Should I go over here? Should I go over there? When I dropped in and I did this double flip and I did like an open to real tight one, it was kind of like a change the game. Everyone started, like I was like a robot. Everyone was saying to me that you can do everything. I don't understand why why you haven't been here before, where have you been? You know, like what happened last year? You, you crashed and this year you come out and you win and you win everything. I, I didn't feel like I was there. My mom was at home, my mom was thinking of Blake, my mom was thinking of how to just become stronger as a person. 
That contest like made me feel like I can do whatever I want to do in life and that was it. Like that part of my life I guess is the reason why I stand like tall now and uh, do things for me because like I believe in myself because that's what it takes to be at a high level like in any type of sport or avenue you, you got to separate yourselves from everyone else and I felt like uh, Blake was so different from everyone else and I was trying to be the same as everyone else as soon as he up and gone I became different and I became Kyle Baldock. The sport's pretty young. It's like 25 years old, I'm pretty sure. The kids that are coming up now that I'm seeing, I am 21 for five years. Do the maths, it makes me 26. There's kids that are 18, doing the same tricks as me, doing the same tricks as Logan, doing the same tricks as Dave Mira. Now, I don't, my bit is not to be the best in the way that you're just the best and you fall off and then another dude comes past and he's, he becomes the best. It's to leave something behind. It's like leave, leave the legacy. It's my job as Kyle Baldock is to go to the crowd and make all of you out there want to ride bikes. That's it. And now everyone has ridden bikes before, so you can't tell me that you can't ride one. But my whole goal is to make the next Dave Mirror that's sitting in the crowd that I don't even see yet want to be a pro and actually show the world what he's got to offer. Like this year's X Games coming to Minneapolis 2017. I'm actually coming with a vengeance. See, in 2013 I did, I think it's me and one other person, Kevin Robinson, we did park, I did park and dirt, won a gold medal in both on the same day. He's already earned himself a gold medal earlier today in the park final. Is he going to be able to walk out of here with a second one? It all comes down to these last two runs. He could top his score and then really put the pressure on Ryan. Double tail whip flip. Huge two. I can't emphasize that enough with him. Barspin to tuck no hander. X up. <laughs> Gigantic. And up next, Kyle Baldock. He's already got a gold medal in BMX Park earlier today. Massive three foot. He just does things huge. Taylor to bar spin. Bar spin. Still got an X up in. Didn't look like he was going to have the speed. He did. <laughs> Paul, what you have? Windshield wiper 360, whip to whip back. Yeah. It's up. Uh, Your top three right now. And this gentleman right here, he's already got a gold medal from earlier today in BMX Park. This is Kyle Ball. And what I said about Ben Wallace, really, here, this guy goes big. Bar spin to tuck, no headed flip. And just a massive moment at 360 foot. That was huge. Uh, well, Kyle always showed potential. He's never been afraid of anything, always keen to send it over the biggest jumps, and has just always had heaps of charisma. Like, even, as a, even as a kid, he just had more charisma than you'd expect. It's the same with his whole family. I know his brother will be there, and his nan will be there, edging him on and making him, I'm going to have to say, kick ass again. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to watch him again in the next games, it's, yeah, and I get to usually hold the trophies and the gold medals. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so everyone watch the next games. <laughs> this is all leading up to this one time where you put it all down and X Games is going to be the time for me where I want both. I've been training for both, I've been filming a bunch, like with mixed grips. We kind of met so randomly, but I had to film a, an ESPN video, and uh, we came in and asked and stuff, and he was telling me he could, we could put cables from tree to tree, and we're going to run this upside down copter, and this uh, four-wheeled uh, like motor control car down this thing with a big red camera on it, and I was blown away that he actually was insane as me, but I'm on the bike and he's behind the camera, so I felt like we clicked so well to be able to make stuff look, uh, I think, outside the box. So for the last two months, I've been here in Australia filming content for ESPN, X Games, and my own social media.
everyone can say that you just got their call, you just hop, skipped and jumped and you're the, you're the pro or whatever, but no one's seen the five, six years before that broken 27 bones or, or having like, you know, big head injuries where you almost can't ride. So I feel like the only lesson that I can tell someone, because I'm not full of lessons, is that you need to give it 110 no matter what or die giving it, you know what I mean, and that's it. It comes down to hard work pays off. The more hard work you put in, the more lucky you get. And I don't see why that is funny, because you get luckier the more hard work you put in.